Hey there, what's up and welcome to the Phil Studio. Today is a great day because you will learn how to open your SM57 without damaging the fragile diaphragm. And while we're there, I'll show you how to replace the capsule. Let's go. Hey, what I have here is a damaged SM57 microphone. So I'll show you in a second what I mean by damaged. Basically, replacing the capsule on a SM57 is probably one of the easiest repairs you can do. It's simple enough. You just take these two parts here and you, as you can see here where you can unscrew the mic in two parts. So gently unscrew both parts. On the left, you've got the capsule assembly. And on the right, the barrel connector. If you're replacing the whole capsule assembly, it's easy. Just two soldering points. Basically, you're done. You screw back the mic and that's it. But today, we're going further. I'll show you how to open the capsule itself and replace only the capsule element. So if you ever find a loose capsule or want to scavenge one from another mic, this video will be for you. But before we go on, be careful. Opening an SM57 comes with risk. Damaging the capsule is the number one mistake people make, and that's exactly what I'll demonstrate in a moment, on purpose, just for you. Yeah, exactly. Once you've separated the capsule assembly, you'll see a yellow and green wire. Take note of their position. We'll need to, to later for soldering. Simply apply your soldering iron to each tab, and the wire should lift off easily. Or you can snip the wires close to the solder tab, but leave a bit of the colored jacket so you can still tell which is which later. If you ever get your phase inverted, uh, just swap the wire and it should fix. Now for the secret part of the SM57 capsule. Carefully peel off the sticker on top. You'll see two metal tabs underneath. If you see only one, you're on the road the wrong side of the mic. Those tabs belong to a metal ring that circles the capsule frame. To release pressure from that ring, push the tabs inward while applying slight downward pressure and gently pull the, the capsule cover, also called the windscreen. It's tricky. I recommend practicing with a scrap mic because, well, as you'll see, that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm destroying every time. Be careful. Oops, and there goes the diaphragm. That's the worst that can happen. Is the most fragile part of the mic and now it's just gone. But don't worry, this one was already dead, rusted, corroded, long gone before today, so it's the perfect test subject. If you've got a junk mic like this, practice with it before you open a working one. Once you've seen the inside, it's time to actually remove the rest. So unscrew the small nuts. Uh, then remove the washer and the lock washer. That's the one with teeth. Underneath, there's a small PCB and then a black rubber ring that holds everything in place and, and dampens uh, vibration. Take that out too. Now you can slide the capsule out easily. And yes, you'll see me handling this capsule like nothing happened. Uh, but trust me, the diaphragm is long gone. Take a good look at this rust again. That's dead from the walking dead. To reassemble, start by placing the black, the small black grill uh, back into place, into the, the tubing, then slide the capsule back down into the housing. Then go in reverse, rubber piece, the PCB, lock washer, washer nut, and tighten everything down.
solder the yellow and green wire back to the correct tabs and finally screw both part of the mic together i like to give a a counter twist before i start screwing the the two parts together so it doesn't uh, twist the the wire too much and now with we're at the final step, the famous mystery ring, the trickiest part of the SM57. Opening it is tough, but closing it back is worse. So the ring's job is to squeeze the wing, the windscreen against the capsule and hold it firmly in place. That's why the windscreen can spin freely but won't come off. First, insert the small tab of the ring into the hole, but don't lock it in fully. Let it hang just, just a bit. Then align the ring with the yellow tape or the flat side of the capsule. This alignment is important. If it's off, nothing will fit properly. Next, insert the windscreen at a slight angle, not all the way in yet. Make sure the ring clears the capsule edge. Once lined up, push the windscreen in gently, but firmly so it so everything like sits flush. And now close the ring so it snaps back inside the windscreen and wrap snugly around the, the capsule. A pair of pliers work best. Just a little pressure and you'll see the ring pop under the windscreen. If it doesn't, gently nudge it with a small flathead screwdriver. To check your work, look for the two metal tabs uh, of the ring showing through the plastic hole of the windscreen. If you see them, the top is installed correctly and it should spin freely. And that, that's it. This part takes some practice, so if you're new to this, try it first on a broken or spare mic. And I hope this uh, video helped. If it did, don't forget to subscribe for more repair guides and DIY tips. See you next time. Son, how do you push stop on that? <laughs>